Hello everyone, welcome to another module in this online course strategy and introduction to game theory. So today we are going to start looking at simple games. We are going to start looking at our first game, which is the game of, which is a very popular game known as a prisoner's dilemma, which involves a simple game, a formulation of a simple game or an anecdotal game between two prisoners. So let me start by drawing a cartoon of these two prisoners over here. So we have prisoner 1, prisoner 2 and they are actually in a prison. So let me try to draw my little boxes around here, try to simulate as closely as possible a prison, although fortunately, thankfully I have no idea how it really looks like. So these are my two prisoners P1 and P2 who are our two sort of figurative metaphorical prisoners, right. And uh, well, these prisoners, the game is as follows. These two prisoners are accused of a major crime. So these two prisoners are accused of a major crime. And the important thing here is there is no evidence or there is no eyewitness account of seeing them commit the crime. So there is no eyewitness. So these two prisoners who have been caught are accused of a major crime and unfortunately there is no eyewitness and convenient for our, conveniently for our game there is no eyewitness. So the only possibility is to use one as an evidence or one of them has to confess to the crime and act as an evidence against other or both of them can confess to their crime. All right. So the only possibility of getting a conviction is for one of them, at least one of them to confess. All right. So the idea is to get at least to get to get one or both to confess to this. So the idea is to get one or both to confess to this major crime. So the investigators devise a plan or the interrogators devise a plan and the plan is follows. Obviously, if you ask both of them together, both of them are going to deny having to do any with anything with it. So both of them are interrogated separately. So the both the prisoners are interrogated in separate rooms such that they cannot communicate with each other. So both and this is the key aspect of the game. This is an important this is the rule or the framework of the game that we are talking about. That is both prisoners are interrogated in separate rooms in the sense to say there is no communication allowed between them. That is one cannot see, one of the prisoners cannot see or decipher what the other is trying to do or what is the, what the action of the other prisoner is, right. And as we already said, there are two possible actions available for each prisoner. There are two possible actions or two possible strategies, either to confess, which we will denote by C or to deny which we will denote by D. So each prisoner has two possible actions, either they confess or they can deny. Now the utility or what they get as a result of their actions as are as follows. If they both deny, then of course there is no evidence of the crime, so both of them get a sentence for a minor crime which is one year in prison. If both deny, each gets 
a one year sentence. If they both confess, of course, there is evidence of a major crime. If both of them confess, then each of them gets a prison sentence of three years. If both confess, each gets a prison sentence of Three years. So, in that sense, it is symmetric. If both of them deny, they get a prison sentence of one year each. If both of them deny, if both of them confess, they get a prison sentence of uh, a prison sentence of three years each because now there is evidence of the crime. An interesting situation occurs when one of them chooses to confess and the other denies. If one of them chooses to confess, then of course, as an incentive, he is allowed to walk free. The other person now is in trouble because he is not cooperating and also there is evidence against him for the crime. Right? For instance, if P1 confesses and P2 denies, then P2 gets a harsher sentence because now there is evidence against P2 and moreover P2 is not cooperating. So, if one confesses, if one confesses and other denies, then the confessor walks free or a zero year prison sentence, while the person who denies gets a harsher sentence or one who denies gets a sentence of 4 years. right? So, if one of the prisoner confesses, let us say P1 confesses and P2 denies, then P1 gets 0 years and P2 gets a harsher punishment of 4 years. On the other hand, if P1 denies and P2 confesses, then P2 gets a 0 year prison sentence, he walks free as an incentive and P1 gets a harsher that is a 4 year prison sentence. So, that is the game. So, let me just repeat, if both of them both of them have two possible actions, they can confess or deny. If both of them deny, there is no evidence, so each gets a lighter sentence, one year each. If both of them confess, each gets a slightly harsher sentence, three years each. But if one confesses and other denies, then the person who is confessing walks free, that is he gets zero years and the person and the person who is denying gets a four year sentence. So, obviously, you can see this is an interesting game. Now, let us first try to see, let us try to fit it into our model of a game. Let us try to see, this is the prisoner's dilemma, which I am going to call, abbreviate as PD. Who are the players in this game? Of course, this, the different players here, it is obvious that the players are the different prisoners, right? The different prisoners are the players. They have a strategy. It is a competition between them to either confess or deny, these are the possible actions that these prisoners can take. And what is the utility? The utility obviously is each one is looking out for himself, each one is trying to minimize his prison sentence, right. His utility can be thought of as the negative of the prison sentence. The smaller his prison sentence, the larger is his profit. So, we are trying, so each one is trying to minimize his <coughs> prison sentence. Of course, we already said there are some rules. What is the rule? They cannot communicate with each other. The rule is no no communication between the prisoners. So, this is an example of a game. It has multiple players, prisoners. It is a competitive activity. Each one can choose to either confess or deny. And each one is trying to minimize his prison sentence, thereby trying to maximize his utility or trying to maximize his comfort or profit. And the rules are there can be no, there is no communication between these different prisoners, right. So, this is fits into our definition of a game, right. Now, how do we analyze this game? 
To analyze this game frequently such simple games can be represented in the form of what is known as a game table. So, to begin analyzing this game, we will take the help of a game table. We will cast this game in the form of a game of a convenient game table. Well, what does the game table have? The game table has well along a bunch of columns and rows. It is become it is going to become clear what I am going to put. I am going to set the rows for P 1, the columns for P 2, P 1 can confess or deny, P 2 can either confess or deny. So, the rows basically show the actions that are available to P 1 or the prisoner or prisoner 1 and therefore, P 1 can also be called as a row player, frequently is also known as the row player. The columns show the actions that are available to the column player that is confess, one column is confess, one column is deny. Of course, here we see that the actions available for P 1 and P 2 are identical, but that need not be the case in each game. This game is of course, symmetric between P 1 and P 2. And now, what we can look, we are going to fill each box with a corresponding payoff for each of the players depending on the outcome. So, if you look at C C, the box corresponding to C C, that means prisoner 1 is choosing C, prisoner 2 is also choosing C. And as we said, if both of them confess, each of them gets 3 years in prison. So, I am going to write a minus 3 comma minus 3 that is I am representing 3 years in prison as a payoff of minus 3, because remember each one is trying to each trying to one is trying to minimize his prison term. So, the lower his prison term, the greater is his profit, right. So, the payoff is really the negative of the prison time, right. So, I look at the box corresponding to C C, which means player 1 has confessed, player 2 has confessed. I am writing the payoffs of the first payoff is that of player 1 the second payoff is that of player 2, each player gets 3 years in prison. So, it is a payoff of minus 3 for player prison 1, prisoner 1, minus 3 for prisoner 2. Similarly, now you can figure out if I look at the DD box, where the first prisoner is denying, the second prisoner is also denying, each one gets 1 year in prison. So, it is minus 1 for each one of them. So, each one gets a payoff that is prisoner 1 gets a payoff of minus 1, prisoner 2 gets a payoff of minus 1. Now, an interesting thing of course, happens when prisoner 1 confesses, but prisoner 2 denies and in that case we said the prisoner 1, prisoner 1 who is confessing gets 0 years in prison that is he walks free, while prisoner 2 who is denying gets a harsher sentence of 4 years in prison that is minus 4. And if on the other hand, P 1 denies doing the crime and P 2 confesses to the crime. Therefore, P 2 acts as evidence against P 1. Therefore, P 1 gets minus 4 for not cooperating and P 2 gets to walk free for cooperating and acting as evidence against P 1. So, this summarizes this sort of elegantly and very conveniently captures this game of this prisoner's dilemma. Right. So, we have reproduced the rows to represent the actions of prisoner 1, the columns to represent the actions of prisoner 2 and each box which corresponds to the intersection of one action of prisoner 1 and other action of prisoner 2 represents the payoffs. And you can see interestingly, the payoff of prisoner 1 not only depends on the action of prisoner 1, but also depends on the action of prisoner 2. Right. For instance, if P 1, if P 2 chooses C, if P 1 chooses C to confess, he gets 3 years in prison, while if he chooses to deny, he gets 4 years in prison. So, the payoff of prisoner 1 or the utility of prisoner 1 is not only de determined by his own action, but is also determined the action of his opponent or his competitor. And that is what makes this a competition or that is what makes this interaction a strategic interaction. This is a competition or a strategic interaction, because payoff is not only determined by your own action, payoff is also determined your action 
in conjunction taken together with the actions of your competitors and that is an important aspect of a game payoff is determined by action of individual together with actions of competitors. Payoff is determined by the action of the individual together with the actions of your competitors all right so that is a part that is an important part of the strategic interaction where my it's not my own actions that determine my payoff but it's my own actions in relation to the actions of all my other competitors right so this is a simple game right a prisoner's dilemma in which there are two prisoners each can either confess or deny and we've also listed the various payoffs now let us formally extract the mathematical notation of this game of course as we said each game has a set of players right multiple players so that can be represented by the set of players p1 comma p2 so this is a set of players i'm sorry i have to write it as a set this is a set of players p1 comma p2 denoting prisoner 1 comma prisoner 2 there are a set of rules which we have already stated the set of rules which are implicit in this game right. there is a set of action each player i has an action set ai the action set there is a set of actions ai denotes action set of player i for example here a1 denotes the action set of player 1 which is c comma d confess or deny a2 which denotes the action set of player 2 is c comma d which is to confess or deny right of course here it turns out that the action set of each of the players is same but that need not be the case for any general games right so this is the action set action set of p1 this is action set of player p2 so these are the action sets of the different players and of course a game is characterized by a set of outcomes what are the different outcomes of this game for instance where both prisoners are confessing is one outcome one is confessing other is denying is another outcome or both of them denying is another so there are different what are these different outcomes these different outcomes are nothing but a combination of the actions of the different players so the set of outcomes is O which is nothing but the cross product or the Cartesian product between these two action sets because each remember each agent or each player is choosing an action from his action set. So therefore, it is the Cartesian product between these action sets which is CC both confessing CD player 1 confessing player 2 denying DC player 1 denying player 2 confessing or dd player 1 and player 2 both denying so we have a set of outcomes right and that is what we are saying remember the payoff to each player depends not only on his action but it depends on the outcome which is his action together with the actions of all the other players so the possible set of outcomes in this game are cc where both players are confessing cd where prisoner 1 is confessing prisoner 2 is denying dc where prisoner 1 is denying prisoner 2 is prisoner 1 is denying prisoner 2 is confessing and dd where prisoner 1 and prisoner 2 are both denying right and what is the payoff the payoff can be represented as a function ui of the outcome for instance i have u1 of the outcome u2 of 
the outcome O to represent the payoff of each player. These are the payoffs, payoffs or utility functions of the different players. However, in game theory, we use a slightly different and a slightly complicated notation and this is where I would like to draw your special attention. When we mention the utility of each player, we represent it by a utility function u of i and we first give the action of the ith player followed by the actions of all the other players which is denoted by a of minus i. Right? So, this is a convenient notation in game theory where the first action a i belongs to the ith player and then we give the actions of the rest of the players. We give actions of rest. For instance, if I am talking about player 1, my notation would be u 1 a 1 comma a 2 that is what is the action of player 1 followed by action of player 2. While I am talking about utility of player 2, I will first mention the action a 2 of player 2 and action a 1 of player 1. Right? So, game theory uses a slightly different notation and this notation is denoted by u of i a of i a of minus i a i is the action of the ith player a minus i denotes the actions of the all the other players other than the ith player. This is the notation used for denoting the utility or payoff of This is the notation used for denoting the utility or the payoff of the ith of each player. For instance, if I take go back to our example of the prisoner's dilemma, if you look at it, if I look at u1 of c comma c, let us look at u1 of c comma c, u1 of c comma c is utility of player 1, player 1 confesses player 2 also confesses and therefore, we are talking about the utility of player 1 when player 1 confesses and player 2 also confesses and as we know this is equal to minus 3 because in this case player 1 gets 3 years in prison. Right? On the other hand, if I look at utility of player 1 c comma d, this means player 1 confesses player 2 denies and in this case u1 is the utility of player 1 when player 1 confesses player 2 denies this as we know is 0 because in this scenario player 1 gets 0 years in prison that is he gets to walk free. On the other hand when we write if we write u2 of c comma d Remember, we are talking about player 2. So, we are looking at the first action refers to player 2. So, this is when player 2 confesses and player 1, the other players, the rest of the players, the rest of the players in this case, there is only one, one other player that is player 1 denies and this is equal to we are talking about the utility of 2 when player 2 confesses and player 1 denies this is also again 
0 because when player 2 is confessing, the other player is denying, player 2 gets to walk free. So, there is a slight ambiguity in, there is a slight, slightly more subtle subtleness involved in this notation, which I hope everyone is going to appreciate. And now, if you therefore write the full set of utilities, you can verify that u1 of c comma c, where player 1 is confessing, player 2 is also confessing is minus 3 u1 of c comma d, where player 1 is confessing, player 2 is denying is 0, u1 of d comma c, where player 1 is denying, player 2 is confessing is minus 4, u1 of d comma d, where player 1 is denying, player 2 is also denying is minus 1, because he gets if both of them deny, he gets 1 year in prison. On the other hand, Again, if I have to write it for player 2, u2, c comma c, where player 2 is confessing and player 1 is confessing is my is is minus 3, u2 of c comma d, where player 2 is confessing, player 1 is denying is 0, u2 of d comma c, where player 2 is denying, player 1 is confessing is minus 4 and u2 of d comma d, where both players are denying is minus 1. Therefore, this is how we mention the payoffs. The payoffs, the important thing to notice here is that the notation that we use is u of i, a of i, a of minus i. This is, this i denotes, u denotes the utility, i denotes u of player i. The action immediately following denotes the action of player i, a of minus i denotes actions of all other players, action of all players or let me write it this way, action of all players other than i. action of all players other than i. So, this is the important, uh, this is the important aspect of the notation, one of the, one of the important aspects of the notation. Slightly complicated, so I hope you spend some time trying to understand this thing. And uh, therefore, why is the prisoner's dilemma? The other thing that I would like to motivate before we start about how to analyze this game or how to interpret the behavior of the different agents in this game, why is this prisoner's dilemma? Is, uh, why is this prisoner's dilemma important or where does, why is P D, why is prisoner's dilemma useful, how, how is P D useful in practice. So, if we look at the prisoner's dilemma, for instance, consider a simple price war, a retail price war. A retail price war, that is a competition between two different shops or two different shops or two different retail chains. And these two different retail chains have an option either to set prices high or or to set prices low, that is either they can choose to set prices high or set prices low, right. And therefore, I can model it as a game between two retail chains, let us say, let us call them R1 my row player is R1, my column player is R2, they can set prices either high or low, R1 can set either a high price or a low price. Now, if both of them set a high price, both of them get a high profit of 500. If both of them set a low price, both of them get a low profit of 250 each. 
But on the other hand, if one sets a high price and other sets a low price, then obviously everyone is going to flock to the firm or the retail chain that has set a low price. So the person who set a high price is left high and dry and the person who has set a low price is going to capture the market and get a higher profit of 750 even at the lower price because he has a higher share of the market. On the other hand, if retail chain 1 sets a low price while retail chain 2 sets a high price, retail chain 1 ends up getting a profit of 750, retail chain 2 ends up getting 0 because everyone is forking to retail chain 1, therefore the payoffs are 750 comma 0. Thus you can see both of them set a high price, both of them get pay of 500 each, both of them set a low price, they get a pay of 250. One of them sets a low price, other sets a high price, the person, the retail chain which set a low price that is retail chain 1 in the row entry L and column entry H, retail chain 1 gets 750, retail chain 2 which has set high price gets 0. In H comma L which corresponds to retail chain 1 setting a high price, retail chain 2 setting a low price, retail chain 1 gets 0 and retail chain 2 which has set a low price gets 750 and you can clearly see at least if you are not able to realize this now, this is very similar to a prisoner's dilemma kind of a situation where you can think of the low price, you can think of the low price as basically being a confess kind of strategy. This is sort of setting a low price is basically sort of can be thought of as equivalent to confess, we are going to look at this later and setting the high price can be sort of seen as a deny strategy. If you try to closely analyze this game, closely look at this game, in fact we are going to analyze this game shortly starting in the next couple of modules. We are going to see that this game can be used equivalently modeled as a prisoner's dilemma where the low is equivalent to a confess and the high is equivalent to a deny. And uh, this, this is a simple example of a market which is simple, which is equivalent to a sort of equivalent to a prisoner's dilemma. And this simple of example of market helps us understand, is going to help us understand some of the principle. Of course, we are going to look at more complicated examples of markets later on. But this simple example itself yields valuable insight. So this is a simple market competition between two retail chains. or sort of online, you can also think of as online retail stores, etc. All right, it can be used to model a simple market example between two retail chains, all right. So what have we done in this module? In this module, we have dealt with a very interesting and a basic game, a fundamental game, which is prisoner's dilemma, which is an interesting example. We modeled it as a game between two prisoners. We have included the set of what are the rules of this game, how this game is played, a description of this game followed by the formulation of a game table, how to represent this game as a game table and we introduced a bunch of notation relating to the say set of players, the set of actions, the set of outcomes and how this is a strategic interaction because the payoff of each player depends not only on his action but the actions of all the other players as well. Also we have given notation which is an important notation related to the utility of each player. Please take a look at this notation again. We also mentioned the utilities and we have tried to see how this prisoner's dilemma even though a simple sort of a fabricated game can be sort of yield valuable insights in practice or can be used to model real life scenarios such as a competition between two retail chains or a competition between two firms in a marketplace. So we will stop this module here and in the next module we will start trying to analyze these games, trying to predict their behavior or trying to predict what are the possible outcomes uh, of these kinds of games. Thank you, thank you very much.